Hi all, this is the first video from this channel and the first subject which we will cover is biochemistry. Let's go straight to the topic. Today's topic is elements. Let's first understand what is universe. Universe is this whole space, time, all its content like galaxies, planets, stars, everything is universe. Universe is made up of matter. What is matter? Anything that occupies space and has mass is known as matter. Matter can be in four forms, solid, liquid, gas and ions. The process of conversion of solid to liquid is meritic. Liquid to gas is vaporization, gas to ions is ionization similarly from iron to gas the process is deionization gas to liquid is condensation and liquid to solid is freeze now as solid has a definite shape means its particles are very closely packed when we compare it with liquid liquid can flow easily that means the particles of liquid are not so closely packed as solid Coming to gas, gas can spread more easily. That means the particles of gas are more loosely packed as compared to liquid. That means when we are moving from solid to gas, the particles are more loosely packed. And this is known as randomness. The particle can move freely. In solid, the particles cannot move freely. In liquid, particles can move freely moderately. But in gas, particles can move freely very easily. So this is known as randomness in the particles and this randomness is given by a term which is known as entropy clear now all the matters are made up of elements maybe single or maybe a group of elements but every matter will be made up of elements elements are made up of atoms and atom contains protons neutrons and electrons Proton and neutrons together form the nucleus of the atom and electrons revolve around the atom in a definite energy path. Elements. Elements are the simpler substances. You cannot break any element into more simpler form and every elements have a specific physical and chemical properties. Now if you look in the periodic table we have a total of 118 elements but all the 118 elements are not natural elements. Only 83 out of 118 elements are natural elements. Rest are man-made elements. That means they are developed in the laboratory. So definitely they won't be found in the biological system. So elements found in the biological system are roughly 25 to 26 elements. That means from 83 natural elements also, all the elements are not found in the biological system. Now let us look to the elemental composition of the living cells. Now, in elemental composition, we can look into as a fresh weight or as a dry weight. If we are looking into the fresh weight, then we can see that the most abundant element is oxygen, then carbon, then hydrogen, nitrogen and so on. Now, if we are looking to the dry weight, then we can find that the most abundant element is carbon, then nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. So, there is a difference in fresh weight and dry weight. The difference is the most abundant element in the fresh weight is oxygen and then carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and in dry weight it is carbon and then nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. Now why so? The reason is the cell contains 70% water. What is the molecular formula of water? H2O. Right? The next maximum content is of carbon containing organic molecules. Now we, as we looked into fresh weight and we have dry weight. So in the fresh weight means water is present. The weight including water is the fresh weight. Dry weight is the weight excluding water is the dry weight. So when water is present, so the maximum as because 70% is water. So hence we found that the most abundant element is oxygen. Then the next abundant is carbon from carbon containing organic compound, then hydrogen and nitrogen. In case of dry weight, as because water is not there, so the oxygen coming from water won't be there. So the next highest will be carbon. So in dry weight, the highest element found is carbon. And then it will be nitrogen, then it will be oxygen and hydrogen. So this is the difference in fresh weight elemental composition and dry weight elemental composition because of the presence of 70% water and carbon containing organic molecules. Now, if we look then 
Among 25 to 26 elements which are found in the biological systems, these six elements are most abundant. The whole biological system is dependent on mainly on these six elements. What are these? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and sulfur. Now why so? Now if you look into the periodic table, you can see that all these elements are present towards the starting of the periodic table. That means they, are, they all are of small size because they have lower atomic number. So one thing is clear, the elements that make up the biological system are of small size. Now what is the importance of being small size? The first important is the strong bonds. The small size elements can form strong bonds. How? Say for example, one element is present here, one element is present here. Now one element should come here so that they can form a chain. Now, if we have a bigger size element here, so can it fit in the small space? No, definitely. So if it is not fitting in the small space, that means they cannot form strong bonds with other elements. So to make strong bonds, it should fit in the proper place. So that means a small size molecule as because it can easily fit in these space hence it can form strong bonds now this type of hindrance which happen because of this bigger size element this type of hindrance is known as steric hindrance so what is steric hindrance it is the hindrance which occur due to the size or the space occupied by any element here as because we are studying the element but it happens in the case of element molecules enzymes anything any substance so when uh, the hindrance is occurred because of its size or the space is occupied, occupied is known as steric hindrance. It has applicability in our life as well. When we are kids, we can form strong bonds, we can form good friends. The friendship is very strong because we don't have steric hindrance. As we grow up, we cannot make a strong friendship or good friends or pure friends because the steric hindrance comes. The steric hindrance is our ego. Why should I say sorry first? Why should I talk first? Etc. etc. So everything is good when it is small size because it can fit very easily and the steric hindrance won't be there. So understood importance of small size. The second advantage is having high surface area to volume ratio. Let's first understand what we mean by surface area or volume. Suppose take one circle, right? What is the surface area for this circle? This outer layer which is exposed to the environment. If we talk about a cube, what will be the surface area of the cube? All its six faces, which is in contact with the environment. Okay, so surface area means the area which is exposed to the surface is the surface area. What is volume? The internal content of the substance is the volume. Now, let's take a biological example to understand this. As because we are all made up of cell, let's take the example of a cell. Mostly we consider cell as a spherical object. Okay. Now, what we are saying, we are saying is as the size increases, surface area to volume ratio decreases. Right. Now, if we are talking about cell, now the formula is surface area to volume. So, surface area for the sphere will be 4 pi r square and volume will be 4 by 3 pi r cubed. 4 pi, 4 pi, we can cancel it out. This 3 will go up and the final formula will be 3 r square by r cube, right? So as the size increases, which depends upon radius. So as the radius increases, the surface area will also increase as the square of the radius. But how the volume will increase? As the cube of the radius. That means definitely volume will increase more than the surface area. Correct. So when the denominator increases more than the numerator, that means the ratio will go down. Let's understand this with proper maths. Say for example, the size of a cell is 1 millimeter, for example. So if the radius is 1, so the formula, according to the formula, it will be 3 and below it will be 1. R cube 1 cube 1, the ratio is 3 to 1. When the size is 2, above it will be 2 square 4 3 is a 12. Below it will be 2 cube that is 8. Now simplify it. We will get 4 3 is a 12. 4 2 is a 8. The ratio is now 3 is to 2. Earlier it was 3 is to 1. 
now it is 3 to 2 so ratio decreased take another size 3 one more so above it will become 27 below it will become 27 if you simplify it it is 1 is to 1 so ratio decreased again so understood as the size increases the ratio decreases because a denominator increases more compared to the numerator which is the surface area correct now what is the importance of having high surface area to volume high surface area to volume ratio means surface area should be more than the volume right now as because here we are talking about elements suppose one element is present here another element is present here and they should form bond among themselves so definitely they'll form bond through their surface the surface will be involved in forming the bonds or if you are talking about any elements enzyme whatever it is the surface is responsible for the reaction so surface area should be high enough then only they can participate in any bond formation or any reaction let's take an example of a biological system to understand the importance of high surface area to volume ratio in a biological system right Take a cell, consider it a prokaryotic cell, for example, E. coli. Say this is an E. coli. So this surface area, what is this for an E. coli? Is its plasma membrane. Now, what is the importance of plasma membrane? Apart from giving protection or shape, it will absorb a nutrient from outside. And it will release waste outside. It has to take nutrient in and it has to throw out waste right if it don't have sufficient surface area this process will stop right so surface area is needed so that this exchange can happen significantly okay now what will happen or how they can maintain their surface area to volume ratio in case of e coli or any prokaryotic cell they undergo cell division okay so what will happen suppose this is e coli this shape it will increase in size it will increase in size till a threshold is reached a threshold beyond which if they increase in size or their surface area to volume ratio decreases they will die at that point they will divide they will undergo cell division to restore their size and high surface area to volume ratio this is the reason why any prokaryotic cell or when a prokaryotic cell or any eukaryotic wherever cell division occur the reason is to restore their high surface area to volume ratio now if we consider any eukaryotic cell the normal cell size is bigger compared to a prokaryotic cell right so how they maintain the high surface area in this bigger sized cell because they undergo some adaptation what is the adaptation here they developed cell organelles right like for example we have a eukaryotic animal cell we have mitochondria nucleus golgi right so we have various cell organelles so by developing different cell organelles we maintain our high surface area to volume ratio okay understood the importance of high surface area to volume ratio because we need more surface for any action to perform okay whether it is a reaction chemical bond or in the cell they need to do exchange of nutrients so everything happens through the surface so surface area should always be more compared to the volume got it so these two are the important advantages of being small sized okay now other advantages are flexibility to form more bonds or multiple bonds these two also depends upon the this uh, property only correct so this is the simple and a small topic of elements so we understood we learned what are the elements which form the majority of biological system and why these elements are only uh, taking part in the formation of a biological system okay clear now one question from my end for you all that is why life is carbon based so think about it search about it and let me know in the comment section if you found the video informative and interesting then please do like share and subscribe the channel see you in the next video till then have a good day